Hello, hello. Well, I'm set up as far as I can imagine right now. Um, so here's a photo of my setup. You can see I've got my Shure microphone and the boom arm and the shock mount and all that. I've got a laptop stand for my Mac. One of my friends suggested I get a 4K monitor, like a 30-inch 4K or something instead. I don't know. Maybe that would help. My eyesight's not great. But um, anyway, this uh, at least gets the screen up to my eye level. I've got the vertical mouse. This is a Logitech vertical mouse. I have this uh, wrist pad thingy that... Uh, someone on Discord recommended for the mouse, so thank you for that. And I've got the Kinesis. Um, the Kinesis Advantage 360, not the Pro, but the USB version. And I have upgraded, or downgraded, depending on how you look, the keycaps. So it's now, uh, I went from QWERTY to Dvorak. Um, and the keycaps, I think, are nicer, actually. They're like die sublimation, PBT keycaps, 75 bucks, not cheap. And I have the magnetic wrist thingies. Uh, and I've got these stress balls. I've got five different stress balls in five different uh, resistances. And then I also have what Matt Might suggested in his blog post, which is... Um, these like wrist thingies to keep my wrist in the correct position. They're sort of compression-ish things. They're supposed to be for carpal tunnel syndrome or arthritis. Matt also said that he wore those at night to help heal his wrists. Um, yeah, so that's about as good as it gets. I guess I could get the external monitor. Also, one of my friends suggested a, a mouse pad. Um, I'm trying to put the mouse in between the two halves of the keyboard. I, I did have it on the right, but that uh, sort of limited how easily I could spread the two halves of the keyboard. I think they're supposed to be roughly shoulder width, and I've got fairly wide shoulders, so uh, putting this in between is maybe a little more comfortable, but you know, this vertical mouse very much is oriented for right-hand use, so... It's not like it's really ambidextrous. I, I do have a small ambidextrous mouse. I guess it depends how much uh, RSI the, the mouse is inducing. Um, it is true that, that you can hold this vertical mouse differently, so maybe that's better over time. Anyway, well, that's my setup. Um, I've got a lot of wires here. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, one change I did make is the... Okay, so these two halves, each half has two USB-C uh, connectors, and one USB-C connector is going up here, and it's going through a dongle. You can see the dongle here. Um, because the other end of this is USB-B. I don't know why, but... So this is USB-C to B, but I have a dongle around, so that's not really a problem. Um, but then you connect the two halves with USB-C. If you get the Pro version, you can get Bluetooth for everything. Um, you know, maybe that was would have been a, a better option. Uh, but this one shipped earlier, and the good thing about wires and all that is, like, you know, you don't have to worry about batteries. You don't have to worry. I know you can connect the other one to wires, but um, you know, it had a more complicated firmware setup. So you had to go to GitHub and check out, uh, you know, like do a branch or something like that or clone the repo. That part was okay. But then you had to set up GitHub Actions. It was like, okay, if I have to mess with GitHub Actions to get my keyboard to work, no. I hate GitHub Actions. So um, that, that was a little too much for me to tolerate. So I'll deal with these wires. But anyway... Um, the, the USB C to C wire that came to connect the two halves was both very stiff and also was very short. So I couldn't actually separate the two halves very far. And I certainly wouldn't be able to put the mouse between them easily. So I happened to have a USB C to C cable, I think probably for an iPad, and I just connected them with that. So it's, it's both a much more flexible 
uh, wire so it's not hitting the the trackpad of my laptop on the stand, which was what, what was happening before. Um, you could see that this this wire is kind of stiff, kind of thick and stiff, and so it's kind of sticking up in the air. That was more like the other wire, uh, and also it's just longer. So if I want to separate the halves more, um, it's just not an issue. So, you know, that I think was was a reasonable upgrade. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I type very slowly on this new keyboard, although I will say I'm already impressed with the Dvorak layout. I, you know, I'd heard all these things about Dvorak and Colmac and all that, and I know people who'd use them. Uh, but putting, you know, putting the uh, vowels under the left hand and then putting, you know, common consonants under the right hand so you can alternate between them, that actually seems to work really well in terms of how how much I move my fingers. So I did a, I did a typing test yesterday for only some of the keys, not the whole keyboard. And my first attempt, I got, I think, 12 words per minute, which isn't a whole lot, but using QWERTY with this keyboard, I my first attempt was like 11 words per minute on that test. So I'm already as fast, I mean, I'm very slow, but I'm already as fast as I was with the QWERTY version of this keyboard, because this keyboard is pretty strange. You know, you're typing a lot with your thumbs. These are all thumb keys. And sometimes the stretching to the thumbs I find kind of awkward. And then the other part of it is, you know, just the shape of this is, is unusual. It's like a little bucket that your fingers are in. So that's weird. And also this is, a, what do they call it, ortholinear or something like that, where there's no staggering. So these are just right above each other. Um, so that's a different layout than a standard keyboard Supposedly it's more ergonomic. Okay, um, I, I believe it, but it's it's different enough that you know it's, it's definitely messed up my sense of where keys are. And also, even with the QWERTY layout, there were lots of keys that were in different positions. And also the arrow keys. Oh man, the arrow keys. So the arrow keys are set up. I don't know if you can see this, but you know here's like the up and down. And then the other half, you know, I can show you this way. So this is, I, I took a screenshot from the software for changing the layout. So anything in green or, or changes I made for the court, I mean, the Dvorak layout. Uh, so you can see I've got left and right here, left hand, and I've got up and down on the right hand. I'm very, very used to right hand having all four keys and in particular having them laid out in inverted T shape. I'm just so used to that. So this is going to take a little time to get used to, probably. You know, maybe the fact that, uh, you know, this idea that you can alternate between the two hands, maybe that actually makes sense for the arrow keys. I was short, sorely tempted to move those around, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try to learn it um, kind of the standard way, to the extent this is any of this is standard. Um, you know, the command, command keys, those are like the... Uh, uh, on the Macintosh, those are like the clover shape. And then this left option, that's the option key that has, I don't, I don't really know how to say what that sign looks like on the Mac. It's, it's got a very weird character. And then here, this is the control that has like the up, up air, the carrot or whatever. And then this is, uh, the, the actual keycap says backspace, and this is, says delete. Uh, and then instead of saying return, this says enter. And so on the Mac, this would be a return key, not an enter key. But on the keycap, it says enter. Whatever. I can deal with it. Um, and what else is kind of weird here? So the escape, which I, I mentioned before, I didn't even realize the keyboard had an escape. I was so used to having escape way up here. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, the tilde and the back quote. You know, I'm used to those being up here right under escape. So that's definitely a big change. You know, and that's even with the QWERTY layout that's like that. Uh, the number keys are basically the same. That's not a big change. Uh, 
the okay so the the parens um or well these are the square brackets where the parens, the parens are nine okay that's fine um these brackets uh I'm definitely not used to those positions that's definitely different uh yeah uh this is uh, yeah uh, this is a different position with the question mark and the, and the slash. That's in a different position. So anyway, what I found is even the QWERTY layout is such where with the ortholinear layout and the moving of some keys around and the, using the thumb, that's a big adjustment, I have to say. I mean, maybe that's better longer term, but I find this really awkward often. I'm finally getting to the point where inner versus space, I'm not constantly hitting the wrong one. Uh, that took a long time. This forward delete, um, that's a handy key to have in some context, but I'm used to not having that on, on my normal keyboard. So uh, I've used it a few times. So I kind of feel like that's maybe not the best real estate. One thing I do find uh, awkward with Emacs, especially if I'm using the mouse with my right hand, is you know Emacs everything is set up to use control, so my control is on this keyboard or sorry on the right hand, and I don't have it at all on the left hand. And often it's like Control X, you know. Okay, here's Control X, um, but also just my hotkey, my chords or whatever are, are unusual. So now like I may do Control X S. Okay, so now what, what I'm used to doing with my left hand entirely. I have to do with a combination of right and left, which is not great when using the mouse. So I'm really trying to figure out how to not use the mouse when typing at all costs, if, if possible. Um, the other thing I'll say is that I've really gotten used to the Mac laptop with the giant trackpad that you can use with your thumbs. So when you're using that, I mean, I don't know, ergonomically it might be horrible, but when you're using that, you really never have to take your fingers off the keyboard in order to move the cursor around. And I'm, I'm so used to that, that this is just, uh, this feels kind of awkward. Um, and I'm also used to having a keyboard that's not split so that even if I am using the mouse with my right hand, I can use my left hand to kind of access all the keys. So that's not really doable with this setup, especially with this, the two halves split. There's, I'm not going to use my left hand to try to type stuff here. That wouldn't make any sense. So anyway, I'm, I'm getting more used to it. I'm trying to not change any anything other than the standard layout. I may have, I mean, I guess I did change these uh, a little bit, but you know, I think they're fine the way they are. I think this is as good as they get, let me put it that way. And and this also matches, if you look at a, at the, my, Mac, my Mac laptop, there is, is almost right. So this would be option to the left of command, and then you would have command and then control. So I've swapped those. Uh, yeah. I, I think I like this uh, ordering best, but either way. I think those are okay. Um, like I said, the the thumb trying to reach like these keys in particular, that's kind of awkward. Or if my hand is in a position where my thumb can reach these, then it doesn't reach the space very well. So you have to kind of keep your thumb, you have, have to keep your hand hovering. Um, maybe that's okay. I might just be moving my hands around more. Um, you know, I do have these magnetic wrist pads that, go here and here so I can rest my my hands when I want to and for night right now I'm wearing these cursed uh, uh, wrist thingies on my hands so we'll see how much I can tolerate that but okay this is about as good as it gets I am going to commit to this I'm going to use it for all my typing and for all these videos I apologize I'm going to be slow in the beginning I will try to Stay calm, keep calm and carry on and not, you know, rage when I'm, I'm slow. Um, you know, if Bob Weir could learn slide guitar while on tour with the Grateful Dead, I can learn this keyboard. I guess the saving grace is I was already so slow 
with the QWERTY version of this keyboard that I think the Dvorak version won't really be slower. Uh, and I think I'll quickly get up to at least a modicum of speed with a little practice. Um, and, and I am very pleased with how little my fingers move with this uh, D Dvorak layout. So that, I think, ultimately is a good move. I would even consider going to Dvorak for my laptop keyboard, although there's no way to change the keycaps. So uh, I've never gotten to the point with touch typing where I didn't actually have to look at the keyboard occasionally. Eh, maybe that'll happen this time. But once again, you know, my keyboard layout on my laptop uses staggering. The keys are in different positions. So I probably won't go to Dvorak on my keyboard for my laptop. I'll probably just, you know, consider that a different mode in the same way that when I'm playing StarCraft, the key, the keys just mean something different to me in StarCraft than, than when I'm typing. It's like, okay, that key means make hydralists. It doesn't have anything to do with the letter H in a way. Um, that's kind of my mental model. So probably I'll get used to this and I'll just be, there'll be a mode where I'm typing on my keyboard, on my laptop, and that's a totally different mode than when I'm typing on this thing. And, and the setups are so different visually and tactily and that I think I'll be able to go back and forth between them. So that's my setup. Pretty expensive. This keyboard was, I think, something like 450 something like that. The, the keycaps that I got were 75 the vertical mouse, I think, was on the order of a hundred dollars, close to that. Um, the I forget how much the stand was. I got this aluminium stand, the M series stand or something. Pretty nice. It's um, it's a little flexible, so if I am typing with the keyboard or using the trackpad, uh, the laptop, you know, like shakes a little bit, but it it's okay, I think. Um, the, the other thing about it is, you know, I really have to open the laptop screen the whole way to the stop. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm used to having a bunch of old Mac laptops where the hinge would break or the, the screen would separate back when they were plastic. Um, and so I'm just like a little nervous of, of opening the laptop screen all the way to the stop. I normally don't do that. I don't open it quite that far. So... You know, that's got like a little bit of screen anxiety. Is, is the screen going to hold up to that? Is the hinge going to hold up to it? I, I think it's probably okay. I don't think I've ever had a, um, an aluminum body MacBook fail that way, but certainly I had plastic MacBooks fail that way. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I also have to keep the screen a little further away from me because, you know, the keyboard's got to fit under it. Um, so that's... You know, my, my eyesight's not great, so the screen looks smaller. So, that, you know, the, like my friend suggested getting a 30-inch 4K monitor, I might consider that. Um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. One problem at a time. My problem was my wrists were hurting. By the way, I was trying to be very careful with my elbow position and wrist position, and I noticed at some point my, or should I, you know, with my wrist position mostly, and I noticed that my right elbow started hurting. <laughs> so it's like, all right, I'm going to just have to be careful with my posture in general. Um, probably make some adjustments. Like my desk might be a little too high right this second. I don't know if I can lower it anymore. Um, because the, this keyboard has some real height to it. Even with the legs down, like there are these little stand standoff things where you press a button and it can pop up. It has three different heights. One height is quite high is it's like asymmetric. So this part and this part go up high. And so your wrists are really more of an angle, like at a 45 degree angle um, to the horizontal desk. Right now I've got them at the lower lowest uh, angle, but it still means that part of the keyboard's probably three or four inches above the the desk. And so I might need to lower my desk a little bit more. Well, that's my setup. Uh, when I'm going to commit to it. Uh, I'm going to try to make all my videos using this setup just so I get, you know, proficient as quickly as possible. I'll probably do some typing exercises. I don't know if I'll make videos of those or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's it. So no more excuses. Um, 
I, I will try wearing these wrist thingies at night or when sleeping. I'll try that, see if that helps any. I will say that last day I haven't had a uh, real wrist pain, um, but I also haven't typed a lot. You know, I typed a little bit. When I did type, I had a letter I had to write. And for that, I just used the laptop keyboard just because I was late on that letter and it had to go in. So, you know, I'm just like, eh. And I, I was uh, typing laying prone on bed, on my bed, you know, uh, probably like the absolute worst ergonomics possible, but I just had to get that thing in. So um, in the future, hopefully I will get up to speed with this keyboard and I'll feel comfortable typing things like letters at full speed. That's it. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.